You're smiling. <laughs> Oh, are we doing a fun passage? Go ahead. We're not doing a fun passage. We are doing a serious passage. Okay. First Timothy 2.12. Yeah. I permit no woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She is to keep silent. Yeah. Crystal clear. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's something that's crystal clear enough that has really, I think, turned people off in a sense to not just Paul, but the Christian faith, you know? So, and, so, and I get it. I mean, it, and it is clear. That, that's just the thing. It's very, very clear. The problem is that there are other places in the Bible that are also clear, like where women are actually doing the very thing that this passage says not to do, like in yeah. Paul's letters, for example. You know, in Paul's other letters, it's, it's like uh, women are prophesying yeah. in church, you know. That's preaching, really. That's not like being a prophet and telling the future prophets don't do that. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, so I, I think it's, it's really important to see there is diversity within the Bible. And, and you know, in, in the immediate context, really, that's an important thing, too, of, of, of this letter. A lot of scholars have thought that there's something going on socially and religiously in the world, like there's the cult of Artemis, you know, a female uh, deity. And it might, that might have influenced this, you know, the, the writer saying that um, you know, women are to keep silent because there's like a bad influence over there. And we don't want to give any impression that we're mimicking what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to do that here. Now, he grounds that in the Adam and Eve story, which is really, in, it's an interesting bit of interpretation, leaving that alone for a second. The point is that there's a cultural context for this as well. You know, when you're reading the letters, you're reading somebody else's mail. There is a context, there's something going on that we're not really aware of. We have to try to take guesses yeah. uh, about. But the worst thing to do would be just sort of to lift this passage out and say it's crystal clear. Therefore, we're going to do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's treating that passage prescriptively. Mm -hmm rather than descriptively. And th this is a great example of a passage where you have to make that kind of a choice. Is yeah, can you go you into that more? Yeah, a prescriptively is like taking it as sort of like an instruction manual. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. this is God speaking, and this is true for all time. You do this and you obey, it's sort of like a law. Mm -hmm. uh, descriptively is more saying, oh, listen, look at what they're saying in this context. Mm -hmm. I'm learning something about what they believed was you know, faithfulness to God at that time. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily something you can just carry over to another time and another culture. Mm -hmm. So what sort of things are culturally dependent? That's descriptive. What sort of things transcend cultural dependency? Those are more prescriptive things. And if you want to treat this one passage prescriptively, the question is, what do you do with the other passages? Do you treat them not prescriptively? Right. Right. And that, that gets us into the problem, the problem we always have to work through, which is how do you interpret this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that it's clear, and it is clear, there's no question. Mm -hmm. it, it says what it says, mm -hmm. has reasons for saying it. What do we do is still a very active and valid question. Well, yeah. just do that. Okay, but what about the other stuff that I'm not going to do now because of this? Right? Yeah, that's right? good. The diversity of the Bible is actually a wonderful thing because it forces you not to treat the Bible like an owner's manual. You have to engage it and you have to make decisions. Yeah. yeah, and when it comes to New Testament letters too, there are a couple more restrictive passages that seem to be talking about women who are not able to talk or not able to preach or teach. But mm -hmm. what I'm hearing you say is that there are also passages that yeah. encourage women to be yeah. leaders. Or just assume it. Like, and like at the end of the book of Romans, there's a woman, Junia, who's called an apostle. Mm -hmm. And the history of the church has tried to make that female name into a male name. Right. Because like, no, this can't be because mm -hmm. it contradicts the passage we're looking at now, right? But welcome to the world, right? Yeah. The, these are diverse texts. And how can we, let's say, engage this passage mm -hmm. responsibly, not saying, oh, it's stupid. You might disagree with it, but it's trying to say something. What is it trying to say? How do you engage that respectfully while also engaging other texts respectfully? Yeah. And to say, as, as I've heard many times, yeah, but this is really clear. The others aren't as clear. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's, yeah, that's a bit of a judgment call for me. And yeah. it's interesting, too, about the authority word. So it mm -hmm. says, I permit no woman to have authority over men. Can mm -hmm. you talk more about the word authority? Because it's actually not super clear. It's not super clear exactly what authority yeah. means. It could mean like preaching. And, and that's usually how it's interpreted. Mm -hmm. Although many segments of the church have not interpreted it that way. And women have been preaching all along. But um, authority is, uh, I mean, in any religious system, you have teaching by 
people who know what they're talking about, whether it's Jesus and disciples or disciples going out and teaching other people, you have that. So, I mean, authority means something, right? Uh, but what exactly it means in that text, yeah. there's no footnote the writer gives us. And by the way, what I mean by, for you 20th century Westerners, this is what I mean by authority. Yeah. Is it a, is it a top-down authority? Is it authority to, um, uh, to, to actually uh, say something of, of religious value to other people? Mm -hmm. Is it, you can have authority, but not over men, but over children, so go teach children Sunday school, that kind of thing. Those are all sort of, uh, the, the text doesn't say any of that. We're always filling in the gaps somehow with um, ways of understanding these ambiguous texts mm -hmm. that make sense for us. And the way it makes sense for us is ultimately our own cultural, can I say maybe sometimes baggage, or our own cultural comfortable, you know, comfortableness that we're dealing with. Um, but maybe there's something about these texts that can actually even challenge mm -hmm. our way of thinking about things too. Well, you won't know until you dig into it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you think about it too, like taking things as literally as possible, that she is to remain silent. It were, if we took that literally, women couldn't talk right. like at all. So or I think sing. that there are <laughs> Really? You couldn't hear my beautiful voice. Right, exactly. There That's is, exactly like, what I was thinking about, just you at this point. So, yeah. <laughs> but true. The thing is that... There's a, li there's a again, lack of literalism that's being applied even for people exactly who are saying right. this is crystal clear. It's selective literalism. It's selective clarity. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, I don't mind saying, I think we all do that yeah. to a certain extent. Oh, I'm yeah. not immune from that, but I'm aware of it too. And I think for us all to be aware of it, there's a certain hermeneutical self-awareness. Hermeneutics has to do with interpreting text. To be self-aware of our limitations, to be self-aware of what we don't know, to be self-aware of what we're injecting our own thoughts and feelings and biases, which we all do, yeah. right? To be aware of that, and then you sort of hold these interpretations with, with some humility instead of clobbering. Yeah, I love it. That's the point. First Timothy is no longer a clobber passage. I hope not. Thanks for talking about yeah. it. <laughs>